Hey guys, so a while back I showed you guys how to make a little 3.3 voltage regulator for your ESP8266 or any other 3.3 uh, volt project out of an LM1117-3.3. Now, I love these and they I still use them a ton and you can see these, this is a regulator I've built in the past but they're always just too big or the little AMS little surface mount versions of these are too small they're really not annoying to use but today I have a brand new regulator design for you guys that basically it fits right in the size of a capacitor so you can see here I have a little thousand microfarad capacitor here and it's got a regulator built into it and I this is my new favorite thing in the world I know I always say that to you guys but honestly I built one of these last night for the first time and I built three more just because it was so easy so let me first talk just a little bit about the differences here so in the past We've used, like I said, an LM1117, and I personally use the 3.3 volt version because most of my projects are 3.3 volts. And it also, I usually put a, I think, 100 microfarad capacitor. I believe that's what this little guy is. And oftentimes you would also see I would put a little uh, 100 nanofarad capacitor, and the capacitors just smooth out the voltage. Well, as you can see in these guys, I have a much larger capacitor. And that's because I basically made a mistake. Back in the day when I was making everything with these guys, i.e. yesterday, uh, I thought that basically having 100 microfarads would be enough to suppress any noise and keep my ESP82 projects chugging along happily. That was not the case. You know, oftentimes my projects would reset on me, little just problems here and there. In fact, I still need to update a lot of my modules to larger capacitors because it turns out that 100 microfarads just is not enough, you know, capacitance. It's not enough extra storage there to prevent any problems. But I've found 1,000 works, and especially, you know, if you put a 1,000 on the input and a 1,000 on the output of the regulator, it basically keeps everything pretty smooth. So this project, instead of using an LM1117, uses this little tiny guy right here. Now I know that looks like a transistor, a BJT transistor, but in fact it is an HT7333-A voltage regulator. And there are there's you know, a couple nice little things about this. First of all, it's tiny. I mean, look at the it compared to the size of the capacitor there. It's the same size as the actual can. So it's tiny. It's in the same package as a regular BJT transistor. But the other really nice thing about it that I just is really cool to me is it's a low dropout voltage regulator. So when you're using uh, any kind of, you know, battery, right? That battery starts at a high voltage, and as you use it, that voltage comes down, and eventually it's dead. Well, somewhere in there, it's going to pass below the voltage that your regulator can use. So, with an LM1117, I don't know what the dropout is, but let's just say that you have a 5-volt source, and you're trying to bring it down to 3.3, and let's just say that you had a five volt battery and that battery drops down to let's say uh, four volts, right? So now this has to take four volts and turn it into 3.3 volts. With a whole bunch of electrical things that I don't know, I'm not gonna go into, it converts that, three, that four volts into 3.3. But at a certain point, it won't be able to take the input voltage and drop it down to 3.3. Maybe at 3.8 volts, this thing will only output three volts, right? So that is a problem, especially when you're working with lithium polymer batteries, LiPo batteries, because those generally output at a maximum 4.2 volts and just kind of go down from there. And I think 
usually cut off somewhere around 3.4 volts. Somebody correct me on that. But anyway, this little guy will drop out, has a much lower dropout. In fact, its dropout voltage is 90 millivolts, I think, above its output. So that means 3.3 volts plus 90 millivolts is what your minimum power to get this to output 3.3 volts is. So this is really, really useful for anything that is going to be battery powered, basically. Uh, the one drawback between these two is that I'm sure there's more than one, but at least one of them is that the LM1117 can uh, handle up to, I believe, 500 milliamps of current, whilst the HT7333A can handle up to 250 milliamps. So half the output amperage is this, but let's face it, for most ESP projects, that should be fine. Uh, I did. I recently did a uh, amperage test on an ESP8266, and just regular running, it draws somewhere around 70 milliamps. And then when you are really transmitting a lot, maybe it spikes to 100, 200 milliamps. But usually those are just very small spikes and don't take up a whole lot of time. So anything like a nice big juicy capacitor like this should be able to handle that. So anyway, that's all this you know, background between these two regulators and why this is my new favorite. And this is still great. There's nothing wrong with it, but this is smaller. I mean, smaller is better, you know, sometimes. Let's take a look now at how to build one of these nice little regulators here. So this is basically, it's one of these big capacitors here. And then it is obviously has the regulator. And then it also has a little 100 nanofarad capacitor here. And between these two capacitors and this regulator, we can build a really nice, really compact, it even, you know, is basically like the three legs of, a, of the transistor or of a transistor. Anyway, you can just pop it into a breadboard. So let's take a look how to build this. All right, so you can see I've laid out my nice little duct tape here. So that'll help me with uh, placing the components. So the first thing you need to do is just figure out, you need a, thou a thousand microfarad capacitor here. That's what I have. And anything larger is also fine, but thousand seems to work well. And it's a 16 volt. And so I find the negative side of that capacitor. And I'm just going to put that on the left side here, just like that. So let's put that a little more center, but we'll have the ground on the left side. So on this little regulator here, if you have the flat side facing towards you, the left side is ground. The right side is your uh, output 3.3 volts and the center is your input voltage. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to splay these three legs out nicely like this. And I've given the, the legs that I splayed out, they're bent a little bit downwards too. And I'm just gonna put it right resting in between the two pins of the capacitor. So that's the foundation there. So now I'm gonna get that soldered up and we'll take a look at the next step. All right, from the two feet away that I am recording this, that looks pretty good to me. And now the next step here, well, first, before we do anything further, we're going to clip these leads here. One and two. So now you can already see how it's starting to come together. So we're gonna stick that there. And then our 100 nanofarad capacitor I'm just going to take this and I'm going to bend it at a bend the legs at a 90 degree angle here, just like that. So they're nice and tightly bent. And then all I do here is I take the flat side of the uh, re regulator there and there's just a little bit of space 
in between the actual chip of the regulator and the pins that are soldered. And I'm just going to try to fit the capacitor between those two little slots. So you can see I've got it kind of slotted just in between those little legs there. And then we just push it until it gets all the way snug right up next to the regulator. And kind of push it. And then splay those legs out just like that. All right, and now all we have to do is clip those little extra leads there. And the last thing that I do is just take it and clip those longer leads like that. So you have three nice equal length leads. And I now always know where my ground is because of my capacitor. And if I just know that my ground is on where the ground of the capacitor is and my output positive is on the opposite side, then I know that my input is in the center. And there it is. There's our done little regulator. Now let's go and actually check this out. I, you know, have it working. So here you can see I have an ESP8266 with the power wires coming in and I've already wired it so that the red wire here coming in is in the center. I have my positive yellow wire because that's all I had and a negative ground wire going to my ESP. And if I plug it in, you'll see the little red light came on. So pl plug that in again for you and there you go. So this is a really nice little breadboard friendly uh, power regulator. And this is definitely going to be my new regulator from now on because look how small it is. You know, the regulator itself is just tiny and it incorporates the capacitor, both capacitors and a nice little bread breadboard friendly pinout. It's It's awesome. So there you guys have it, my new regulator. This is what I'll be using on all my projects from now on. So now you guys can make these too. Well, thanks for watching guys. If you like this video, definitely go and, you know, check out some of the other videos on the channel and subscribe to the channel. Uh, and don't forget to give this video a thumbs up. And if you guys want to help out the channel, go and check out my Patreon at patreon.com slash it kind of works. And, you know, toss a dollar here or there. It just helps a, out a, a ton, even a dollar or two. All right. Well, I will see you guys next time.